Hello there. What's going on, everybody? Today, we've got ourselves a Nimbus class V-Wing expansion today for Star Wars X-Wing. And for you Dragon Ball lovers out there, no, this is not Goku flying on a little cloud. Haha. Uh -huh. No, no, that's terrible. Terrible joke. I should edit that and cut it out. But it's so bad, I'm going to leave it in. I was about to just say, you know what? You know what? Let's just redo the whole thing. But let's just keep going. Uh, <laughs> a quick shout out to Luxury Playstyle for sponsoring this video. If you haven't already, check out LuxuryPlaystyle.com. You can save 15% if you use my code VIP. Also, on orders of $35 or more, you're going to get a free Krabok token, which has the lightsaber nunchucks in there. They're super awesome. Great for marking critical hits because they got the C on the one side or 5 on the other side if you're using them for damage or light side versus dark side, whatever you want. Also, a new round of the giveaway started up today for the uh, $25 Amazon gift card. You just have to like and subscribe or rather leave a comment and subscribe you can like to do all that stuff there's a lot more information down in the video description uh, for links on all kinds of other things check out my website all that other stuff anyway let's go ahead and talk about this awesome little uh, v-wing expansion here uh, this is in wave 8 of x-wing second edition and this is actually one of the few ships that can hit fit in the uh, hyperspace docking ring which is pretty cool we get uh it's kind of like the uh precursor to the tie fighter we barely got to see it in episode three but we do get to see its dial here and it's uh certainly in some ways it reminds me of a tie fighter a little bit with the hard ones but it's got the uh, it's got one banks that are red which is interesting it still doesn't have that one straight uh but that's not it's not too bad it's got a 4k turn and a 2k turn still can go really fast with the five straight it's got lots of blue on the twos uh and that's really where most of its blue maneuvers are although it does have the blue three straight uh pretty maneuverable ship um really just lacking uh the the one straight and any kind of uh crazy maneuvers like signors loops or talon rolls but as we will see as we look farther there are some ways around that as well uh, for the ship card itself, uh, we're going to have a two attack with the standard frontal firing arc. We got three agility, two hull, and two shields. So while it's kind of like a TIE fighter, it seems to be a little bit more like a first order TIE, uh, you know, because of the fact that it is shielded. Uh, we've got a focus, we've got target lock, we've also got the red barrel roll, and we have a white boost that can link into a red target lock. So you can definitely make sure... Uh, you, you can definitely make sure you get your target lock. Target locks are actually going to be definitely a thing with this type of ship. Uh, target lock is um, something that this ship tries to use a lot as we look into some of its configurations, some of its pilots, and some of the upgrades that are going to come with it. Uh, and it also has the twin ion engine keyword, which, knowing what we know now, this seems a little redundant uh, because they're adding keywords to ships. Uh, and so presumably this one will have the, the tie upgrade. But uh, it says Twin Ion Engines ignores the TIE ship restriction on upgrade cards. Um, but we know that coming in, uh, you know, later this year, we're going to have a whole bunch of new keywords, uh, including things like TIE. So, um, yeah, and that's, uh, and uh, so, in more information, we talked a lot more about that with my interview with Max Brooks, so I'll put a link to that at the end of the video. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's going to be uh, not really the need for um, list building stuff uh, here on cards. Uh, at initiative three, we get our Shadow Squadron Escort. Um, really no difference here. The, I think the biggest difference between these two is, if I were to guess, is that uh, the Shadow Squadrons would have clone as a keyword, and the Loyalist Volunteers might not, because these are people who are not clones. These are, you know, re you know regular humans who volunteered to, you know, because, again, there was a standing army before the clones were created. It just wasn't very big. So there are non-clones in service in the Republic. Well, this is also a bigger deal uh, in uh, in Star Wars Armada, too, where they have those keywords printed on the cards. And so this seems like that's really just stuff that's used in list building for future upgrades that maybe some things will be clone only or non-clone only. Uh, we get Tarkin in a V-Wing, uh, and, uh, and uh, he's going to be at Initiative 3, and he is going to have the keyword during the system phase. You may choose an object that you have locked at range 1 to 3. Another friendly ship at range 1 to 3 may acquire a lock on that object. Uh, so he's, again, working, like I said, he's working with target locks. He is helping other. So this is good if you want to run, I think, multiple multiple V-Wings. Of course, he can work with anybody because target locks are good for everyone. Um, but if you are running multiple V-Wings, this might be somebody that you consider because the fact that you've got it as a white action or also if, if you have to reposition, if you have to boost, you can still get that target lock. It is going to be good because you can still help help somebody else get it now too. 
um, which is nice. So then it also gives you the ability to target lock uh, and focus, which is always nice. But in this case, you might need to reposition as well. Um, as while target locks are going to help you get the best out of your attack, you know, you still only roll into attack dice. And so, you know, you've, you've to try to set up that range one shot with the target lock is going to be a uh, really nice thing. That, and, and, and they should be able to do that. Um, they definitely should. Uh, that's kind of what they want to do here. Um, we've got click at initiative four. Uh, while a ship that you have locked at range one to three defends or performs an attack, you may spend a charge to prevent range bonuses from being applied. So once per turn, he's got a single charge recurring. And of course, uh, if he has it locked, or, of course, hey, if he's flying with Tarkin, Tarkin can allow him to have it locked by passing him a free lock. Or, of course, he can do it himself. Uh, oddball, uh, after you fully execute a red maneuver or perform a red action, if there's an enemy ship in your bullseye, you may acquire a lock on that ship. So, Oddball doesn't need Tarkin helping him out because he can potentially get it uh, for free. Now, it doesn't say perform a target lock action. It just says acquire a lock on that ship. And, of course, that's going to work for his barrel roll he's to oddball somebody who's very likely going to be doing a barrel roll so this way he can get a free lock so it's almost like he's got barrel roll into a lock as well um you know it, it, it's not it doesn't work exactly the same but you're still getting two actions uh for only one stress we've got contrail uh when you defend or perform an attack and at initiative five by the way when you defend or perform an attack if the bearing on your revealed maneuver is the same as an enemy ship's you may change one of the enemy ship's eyeball results to a blank result, which is especially nasty. Um, and this is when you defend or perform. So if you guys both went straight, if you guys both did, you know, a, a bank, a le bank left or bank right, um, I do believe the bearing, like if the, it, it's not just good enough to say that you banked. Like if he banked left and you banked right, it's not the same. They have to be the same direction as well. It doesn't have to be the same speed, though. Speed and bearing are two different things. Um, but still, that's, I mean, so that's an interesting one. We've certainly seen uh, ships in the past, you know, reference the speed on other people's dial. Uh, but, but this one is matching the bearing, which is, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if we've seen anybody want to match bearings before. So that's kind of cool. We got some configs. Uh, we've got the Alpha 3B Besh uh, config. And this is, while you perform a primary attack, you may spend your lock on the defender. Again, this is, this is part of it, right? You can spend your lock to do something else. To change one of your blanks or eyeballs to a hit result. And this also adds the device slot. Um, so, so this is great. With only two dice, a lot of times you're not going to need to re-roll everything. You, there's a pretty realistic chance you have one hit and one that's not a hit. Or a crit and one that's not a, a hit. And so this is just a way to guarantee that you're going to get... The, those two hits, or, or virtually. It's going to guarantee it in all cases that aren't two misses. And you have a pretty good chance of not having two misses. So this is this is really hedging your bets on saying, hey, I'm going to have at least two, I'm going to have two hits. Um, which is great for all of those range three and range two attacks. And when you get into range one, now you're not quite as likely, but it's still nice because you have the option. Because that's why you perform an attack. If, if you roll three blanks, well, now you just choose to spend your lock as normal. Um, so, you know, it's it's just a really good option to have. And on top of all of that, you're getting the device slot, which has an extra cost, because then if you want to use that device slot, then, uh, then that's going to be, you don't have to pay for the device on top of that. There's no discount applied to the device here. But I like this card. This one I like a little less, maybe, the uh, Alpha 3E-esque. Uh, while you perform a primary attack before rolling attack dice, and this is that's the key, is because it's before you roll anything, you can spend two charge. If you do, your critical results inflict ion tokens instead of damage. Now, the reason I don't like this one as much is the fact that it's before you roll attack dice. You might not get any critical results. It might be a complete waste. Um, I'm guessing this one's going to be very cheap. Uh, like maybe free or maybe like only one point or something like that um just because it it may never work it may never do anything and uh and so so there's you know and and knowing my luck it will never do anything uh, but still but there are ways to work with this there's, there's some other things we're going to look at coming up that if you combine it with this you can manufacture those critical results so in those cases it becomes not so bad but at face value like first looking at this i'm like oh not so crazy but it, it can work with some other things that we're going to see. There's an astromech 
coming up that'll work pretty nicely with this one if you wanted to really make this work you can you can try and make that work um, and so maybe in, in so maybe it won't be exactly maybe it won't be quite so cheap but but yeah also um, I'm gonna go back through some of these because the card art on these is I mean, honestly, I've gotten so used to the card art being great that I don't always talk about it anymore. Uh, and while the card art is great, there's also a chance for some maybe potential spoilers for future ships. I think that's the Aurora. I don't know if it's Aurora or Aurora, but that's uh, one of those Separatist ships. Also, the Mining Guild used one of those in an episode of Star Wars Rebels, so maybe we're going to see that ship show up soon. Uh, and I think we got something else in one of these. Um, I love this. is probably my favorite one right here. Uh, but... Uh, maybe the, uh, the, 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 the shuttle, uh, the, I forget which, which actual shuttle that is, but, uh, that's kind of like the precursor to the Lambda. Uh, I know I've looked that one up before, but, you know, but yeah, that, that was the one I think that Kagi, uh, first took Palpatine on, but the, we, we didn't get a whole lot of those. So, yeah, so there, there's, there's a lot of little hidden ships and potential, potential spoilers in here on things that we might get. I think the Republic is overdue for, a, a big old shuttle. So, you know, let's, let's, maybe, maybe we'll get, that. I mean, I, well, I guess we just got the lat, right? So maybe that is going to take the place of the big old shuttle, but that, the lat does other things. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the Republic's not overdue for a shuttle. Maybe I'm just speaking on, speaking too quickly. <laughs> um, anyway, let's go on to the next card. Uh, we got thermal detonators that are coming in now. We've seen these, um, already. I, I didn't, I, and when I first saw this, I almost skipped right past it. I'm like, we've already got thermal detonators. I'm like, wait a second. That was... Am I getting confused with first edition? And yeah, I think this is the first time we're getting thermal detonators here. Plus, there is all new rules for them. So, um, yeah, so during the system phase, uh, you're going to get four charge on here. Um, during the system phase, you may spend up to two charge to drop that many thermal detonators using the one or two template. Each must be placed using a different template. So you can drop one or you can drop two. And you can drop them both like like they stagger behind you uh, with the one and two templates. So they're going to be very close together, but they're not going to be exactly touching. Um, and when you reload this card, you can recover an additional charge, which is nice. Now, so you can get two back. What's really interesting about the thermal detonators is uh, they are going to make ships at range one uh, roll a, a red die each. And only blanks kind of get them out of the woodworks. Uh, if they get a, 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 an eyeball, I think this article says they take a strain. Or if they roll a hit or a crit, they take the damage respectively. So, so that's not not a bad little uh, not a bad little device to drop and do some nasty. Well, technically a bomb. Also, um, here's one of those droids we were talking about with that ion config. Uh, it's the R7A7. It's gonna have three charge. Astromech for the Republic. While you perform an attack, you may spend a charge to change one hit to a critical result. Now, while this is going to certainly work with that config, this is good in a lot of cases. This is a really... I, I really like this droid. I really do, because how many times you're like, would you love to have this? It's like, oh, I, because it's while you perform an attack. You get to choose... And you can make sure it's you don't use it until after those shields are down after your attack. So like this is a really cool, it's a really cool astromech right here for a lot of reasons. I almost wish this was not uh, a unique. Well, it's because I'm a Republic player and I have my own bias, and it's probably a good thing that it's not unique. But it is a pretty cool astromech. I really like R7. Uh, I think we've seen this before already. This is a Thai uh, specific pilot talent. Um, that says the uh, ion limiter override. After you fully execute a red maneuver, you may perform a red barrel roll action even while stressed. If you do roll an attack die, uh, on a hit result gain a strain, and on a critical result gain an ion token. This is for uh, this is for, for you know for anything that's a tie. So this is going to be in a lot of different packs. Um, this may even show up in future Aces packs, which I'll probably make another video talking about some some of the Aces packs that haven't been announced yet, but that we kind of know are coming and because i think a lot of these upgrades imperial players are going to want this even though we're seeing this now show up you know in a, in a republic uh thing you know and, and and i think all factions are probably going to want something like this because there's a lot of factions that have ties in them beyond just the empire uh so so yeah so this is uh, cool and again this you know makes sense to be included with the v-wing uh we've got the precision ion engines as a modification this one has got the uh tie uh, requirement also an agility three ship so not every tie will be able to take this um 
And so, so we've got uh, before you execute a speed one to three Koya Grand turn, manu or, you know, a K turn, you may spend a charge to execute that maneuver as a Segnor's Loop instead. So, uh, so that's pretty cool. So that's like one of the things we were talking about at the beginning of the video, right? How that maneuver dial doesn't it, it doesn't mirror the tie exactly, but if you put these precision ion engines on it. Now you can do that. Now this may not be something that all of the regular TIE fighters want all that much, but at the same time, maybe. I mean, it really depends on the cost because having the ability to change your move um, is is pretty nice, you know. So so like so if ties that can uh, and, and I haven't run a TIE fighter in a while. Um, I, I, I'm, I believe they have a, th a three-speed K turn that they can do, but I'm, I could be wrong. Uh, but but uh, off the top of my head, there's a lot of ties out there between the first order ties, the Imperial ties, all the tie variants, also the Rebels and the uh, and the and the Scum Mining Guild tie, and, and now the V Wing. Uh, there's a lot of ties out there. So uh, yeah, but not all of them are agility three. As a matter of fact, an awful lot of them are not agility three. So. Um, this will be this will this is worth some some kind of thinking about after the after the fact and like well who's this going to really be best on um, I think it definitely makes a lot of sense to put this on a V wing though because first off they're still getting the choice to change their move well it's like oh it's time for me to go wait a second I don't necessarily, especially on a high pilot skill a high initiative rather uh, this is a, a really nice one for them you know being able to change your move afterwards is really nice you know especially on something as straight now you can go left or right because uh, you. If it'll help you avoid a bump, that's huge because uh, you don't want to lose your action. Um, and especially you don't want to bump on a red maneuver and then not be able to turn around. And oh, that's that's the worst. It's the worst. Uh, so, so yeah, this is, this is probably a pretty good option on most ships that can take it. Um, next up, we got the Q7 Astromech. When you barrel roll or boost, you can move through. And overlap obstacles. Now, this one is not a tie restricted upgrade. Uh, this is just a Republic Astromech. It's probably good on an awful lot of ships that can take it. Uh, I know a lot of my, um, I, I know a lot of my uh, Jedi wouldn't mind having this so that they can boost and barrel roll and kind of line up those shots, especially, uh, you know, especially the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Delta Sevens. You know, with, with trying to line up that bullseye arc will be nice, and I'm sure some of the uh, future. Ships that can take Astromex won't mind that as well. So I like this one. I like this one quite a bit. Um, and I think that's about it. Yeah, so uh, hopefully I didn't miss anything. But yeah, this article just posted today for the Nimbus class V-Wing. Uh, these are shipping. Uh, supposed to, Street date is the end of November. Uh, so I think the 27th is what we're looking like for that. Which is, you know, it's not that far away. It's not that far away. That's going to be... Oh, that's... that's You know what? That's Black Friday. That's the day after Thanksgiving here. Well, Thanksgiving here in the United States. Uh, so that's uh, going to be a fun day to go shopping and uh, pick up all your stuff. So... Fun times. Uh, that's all I've got for you today. A big thanks to my patrons. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel, there's going to be a lot of links in the description below for the uh, t-shirt shop, also for social media, for the other uh, giveaways that I've got going on right now. You can check out crabock.com for more details on those. I want to thank you guys so much. And as always, have a great day. <laughs>